Soon afterward, Jesus left that section of the country around Capernaum and returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. The next Sabbath, he went to the synagogue to teach, and the people were astonished at his wisdom and his miracles because he was just a local man like themselves. He's no better than we are, they said. He's just a carpenter, Mary's boy, and a brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and his sisters live right here among us. And they were offended. Hi, I'm Gary, and you're watching 7 Minutes in the Word. The above reading is from Mark, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 3. Today I am reading from the Living Bible. In chapter 5 of Mark, we saw Jesus cast out a legion of evil spirits from a man who was demon-possessed. We saw a woman with such faith that she broke social distancing ordinances just to touch the hem of Jesus' garment, knowing that this would heal her disease. We saw a religious leader risk his social and religious status by coming to Jesus and begging that he would save the life of his little daughter. And we saw Jesus raise a child from the dead. Chapter 5 was a chapter about faith and success. People were coming to Jesus because they believed in him. And as a result, Jesus was able to do some mighty works. In his return to his hometown in the first six verses of chapter 6, we see a very different story. We read a story of stubborn disbelief. We read a story of familiarity and disdain and bias and rejection. Nazareth was a small town where everybody knew everyone else. It was where Jesus grew up. He had a history with these people. He was a carpenter an uneducated craftsman. He could fix the broken leg on your coffee table, but he lacked the credentials for teaching in the synagogue. He had not been schooled in the religious teachings, laws, and customs. He was Mary's boy, meaning they considered him to be her illegitimate son. They considered him to be no better than themselves. Many considered him to be not as good. Like the people who go through the drive through to get their bag of hamburgers, value the bag of hamburgers more than they value the human being who handed them the bag, the people of Nazareth valued their coffee table leg more than they valued Jesus. In other words, they were offended. Continuing to read in verse 4, Then Jesus told them, A prophet is honored everywhere except in his hometown and among his relatives, and by his own family. And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any mighty miracles among them, except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he could hardly accept the fact that they wouldn't believe in him. Then he went out among the villages, teaching. Jesus was very aware of what the people thought of him, but he was also assured of who he was. He was assured of the mission given to him by the Father. But still, he was amazed at their unbelief. Even his mighty works and miracles did not make them believe. In alluding to the events recorded in the 11th and 12th chapters of the book of Jeremiah, Jesus not only demonstrated his knowledge of Scripture, but he may have also been giving the people of Nazareth a warning about the potential result of disbelief. In other parts of the country, Jesus was able to do mighty works because people had faith in him and in his power, his power over evil and his power to heal and his ability to save and give life. In his hometown, where his closest acquaintances and even his own family did not believe in him, Jesus could do no mighty works. He did what he could. He preached the gospel, though they did not listen. And he healed a few people, though they did not believe. He did what he could. Let us understand, these were not necessarily bad people. Their history with Jesus made it difficult for them to believe in him. However, we know that after his resurrection, his family members believed. His brother James became a respected apostle and leader of the church in Jerusalem. And he even wrote a book of the New Testament, as did another brother, Jude. 
But on this date and on this visit to his hometown, Jesus met with opposition. Does this story sound familiar in your own life? Do you get the feeling at times that outsiders and strangers appreciate you more than your closest acquaintances? Do you get more traction talking with a person at the coffee shop than you get when talking with your neighbor? These people around you who seem to devalue you and, and do not take you seriously are not necessarily bad people. These are people with whom you have a history. At times, even people at church may not value what you have to offer or recognize the gifts that God has given you. Other Christ followers may not see or appreciate your desire and efforts to serve the Father. Some may even be offended. It is important for us to see that even though Jesus was all-powerful, He did not use His power to force people to believe in Him. Faith cannot be forced upon anyone. Faith and acceptance must come from within a person. It is also important for us to see that Jesus did not give up on the people who rejected him. Instead, he did what he could for them. Jesus did not allow this rejection in Nazareth to derail him from his mission to preach the gospel. The sixth verse ends by saying, Then he went out among the villages, teaching. Jesus knew that the Father was with him, and that there were others out there who would believe in him. So, he kept on teaching. We too, when talking with others about Christ, need to understand that we will meet with opposition and disbelief. We may even offend some people. But we also need to understand that the Father is with us, and there are people out there who will listen and who will believe. So, just keep on telling people about Jesus. Thank you for watching today. Please give us a thumbs up and click that subscribe button down in the lower right hand corner. And do come back again next week for another 7 Minutes in the Word.